Morning guys. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be taking a trip to Selwig, uh, the wargaming show in London. Currently, this year held at Lees Valley Athletic Centre, which is where I am now. Gruffy Crow. So yeah, after that, I picked up my guide and walked into the hall. I was actually quite surprised how big it was. The first stop was the Bring and Buy area, where I picked up these awesome uh, Rift Guard or whatever they're called uh, for a project that I think is starting at some point soon. And then I had a good old walk around. So there were some good deals going on. There was 25% off the Battle Throne. Found you were there with their enormous selection as usual. Uh, huge amount of stuff, but nothing I was really bothered by. There was a number of stalls selling this kind of terrain, uh, sort of hand-built stuff, all ready painted, looks like made out of twigs and, and I said, rubberized horsehair. Um, I was really impressed with their fences, but not from a, a buying them point of view, and they were pretty cheap. Uh, but I thought I could probably have a go at that. I quite like the look of them. And the picket fences are sort of zombie games, so I think it would be uh, something I've thought of making before. Uh, this is more the sort of stuff I'd make rather than buy. Um, this was pretty cool uh, find. There was a box full of old uh, War Machine stuff, uh, IKRPG uh, source books and things, uh, as well as the new War Machine, all for very cheap. Uh, so I ended up picking up this Monster Nanocon for four quid. Uh, there was a whole other pile of books and some rando miniatures. Uh, like Freeboot's Fate and uh, Ryan Byron's and stuff. Um, that's pretty cool stuff. Conquest Games, there's quite nice stuff. It was just nice to see all this stuff out and in, uh, in person as well. It's a very different experience to shopping online. Uh, this was a dice shop. I can't remember the name off my head, but I just thought this. Uh, Bowler type thing they set up was pretty awesome D20. Uh, and one of the main things they were selling were these sort of uh, super premium sort of metal dice and uh, they call them like the jewelers uh, selection and really nice dice pins and uh, rolling trays and things. This was another store that caught my eye uh, and mostly cards pockets some steampunky looking terrain. Uh, some really nice stuff, and the guy was talking about um, his MDF buildings that you add like resin attachments to, uh, and I believe they're going to have a Kickstarter in the next few months. For that, that is awesome. Here's the yeah, here they are, Infinity Engine. Uh, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on them. Uh, there's an awful lot of stalls selling sort of historical type stuff that I was very bothered by. Uh, but there was occasionally interesting bits and pieces. Obviously this one was a smaller scale, a plain more scale or something. But uh, quite impressive stuff uh, if you're into that sort of thing. And this is the sort of thing they, that used to be full of is Salute. Uh, and it's slowly sort of uh, backing away from the fantasy stuff. Uh, here we have uh, Perry's selection of stuff. Whole bunches of metal blisters just leaving them out. But the same stall that was selling them had all this fantastic plastic as well. Uh, so we've got the Wargames Atlantic stuff that I was most definitely saw and then a load of the Frost Grove boxes. Um, here were some interesting bits and pieces. Uh, quite cartoony looking, but I quite liked how sort of, uh, nice they were and friendly they were. Uh, and they were, that's the terrain selection um, from, oh, a few nice pentacles. Yeah, it's the terrain selection from Bag Squiddo Games. Uh, they also had the other Squiddo products. And look at all these moving trays. And one of the interesting things was actually also that people were selling 3D printed things at this event. Uh, so this is products for war gamers. Uh, I actually quite liked over quite a lot of the bits that they had. Um, there's a few sort of bits of pre-made terrain. Uh, 
I think this is on the same stand. And they had these lovely western buildings for sale. And that I haven't used to them at the moment, but I was really impressed with the way they went together. Uh, and I actually did pick up something from these guys. I got these cargo containers, three for twelve pounds. Um, and they also had some really nice houses launching on Kickstarter soon. Uh, so that's the 22nd of October on Kickstarter. Uh, definitely want to watch out for. Other old school type things was this rummage box, 50p a piece, but it was all sort of small, slightly smaller scale stuff. At most, it was sort of true 28. Uh, but I had a little rummage anyway. I couldn't help myself. Um, Cause 50p a mini seemed like a good, good deal if there had been anything I wanted. Another thing I couldn't pass up was something called a bargain brush bar. Uh, so these brushes were one or two pound each. Uh, I ended up picking a few of those up for doing metallics and dry brushing and what have you. Um, black one, little pointy ones. Another cool stall was this one. Uh, his Warhammer 3rd edition for £110. There were some absolute gems in these boxes. Uh, but I either already had it or uh, I couldn't really justify it there and then. Another cool thing was a whole bunch of new startup type companies. So this guy, uh, the sculptor, was there and he's made these lovely new minis for an RPG setting. Uh, but he's, these guys on the end, the demons when we get to them, um, are for a... where are they? Here they are. These are for a 54 mil skirmish game that he's working on, uh, which could be quite interesting. It might be nice to see that larger scale. As well as all the stalls, there was a, a bunch of sort of participation and uh, sort of display games going on. This was a massive game of Warhammer 8 position. Some absolutely lovely models uh, in there, including Mom Nurtures. Here was another massive display board. So this was some sort of Mexican Revolution uh, battle all laid out, including uh, aircraft and all sorts of bits and pieces. And it was just an absolutely stunning setup. Um, which looked really nice together. So yeah, this was Shepoy Wargamers, Viva la Revolution. Um, it's a Mexican Revolution. Here's another uh, cool little startup game. I talked to the uh, guy who created this quite a bit. So this is all sort of handmade terrain, but he's uh, designed these miniatures and had them sculpted and has put a uh, fairly interesting rule set together. It's all quite dynamic. There was a lot of pushing people around, pulling, um, sort of hits and rebounds. And it was quite a cool little skirmish sort of uh, game. So yeah, like I said, I, uh, I played a round of this, uh, sort of learned how it worked. All these tokens are from the game, they're all quite important. It's quite open heavy, uh, but still quite nice. And the guy was kind enough to give me uh, one model from each of the factions uh, that I'm going to whack the paint on. So that's Silk Skirmish Encounters, and they're going to have a Kickstarter early next year. Uh, so that's another one to keep an eye on. So after I saw that guy, uh, I saw another guy, similar story, three kind of miniatures. A game with an incredible amount of lore and background, uh, and once again, 3D printed miniatures. They also had an example of how far the sculpting come along, so from the older stuff to the uh, newest stuff. And that's the older one on the right, sort of, yeah. And you can see they've already come quite a long way. Some lovely miniatures on this one, so Sithoscreen Wars. Uh, might be one worth checking out. So yeah, it was a pretty interesting day. As I said, I started shopping and then went around and had a chat to some of these sort of small game designers. Um, all very interesting. It wasn't a massive show. I was probably only there about, I was, I don't know, it's been there two or three hours. And I've come back with a little bit of a haul. Nothing like what I end up with some salute. But as I said, we've got these two uh minis from that guy he was kind enough to ask to me um so i'll do a little mini video on those uh, and he's given me a facebook address to post those to as we saw right at the beginning of the video i picked up these eldar um what are they a wraith guard aren't they i think something like that and they were just a tenner if you can read that uh, i thought that was pretty reasonable obviously they're shockingly painted um 
but they're all metal, so it won't take too long to remove. And yeah, we picked up the Monster Nomicon. I really wanted this when we were playing like RPG. Uh, I've got no use for it now, but it was very, very cheap. So uh, it, I said it was always something I wanted. So in case I ever do go and run some IK RPG again, I've got it on the bookshelf. Uh, and it, to be honest, it's quite a lovely book, I think, just to have a flick through. There's some lovely art in there. Um, and I, I used to be quite into the lore of the sort of Iron Kingdoms type stuff. And there, as you saw, I've got my shipping containers. What was interesting about this is that they've used uh, old um, sort of bits of MDF clearly like wastage as part of the packaging sort of engraved rather than printed which i think works quite nicely uh sort of not in a normal baggie other than that so nice affordable packaging with reused parts i approve of uh, and that was three shipping containers so i'll be putting them together in their own video because uh, i think they're going to make really good double level blocking sci-fi star growth terrain that little bit of paper's got a bit wrinkled but it's from uh products for wargamers and they had these houses you can get a bit close saw those in person including that one at the back there and they're really nicely detailed if i didn't already have my full-size village i'd uh, i'd pick some of those up uh but yeah that's the kickstarter launching launch on the second, 22nd of october so i'll remind you guys when that's on so you can check them out so for the six quid entry um and the sort of you know half tank of petrol it took me to get there and back it was definitely uh, a worthwhile day out i had a really good time and this year I did intend to try and go to as many of these shows as possible. And this is the first one. So I need to force myself to get out and go to more of these things because it was really good uh, to be sort of in the community uh, and out there and seeing these products in real life. It's very different from shopping online, like I said earlier. It also made me think I need to get some business cards, some Scruffy Crow business cards to hand out. So if people say, oh, you've got a YouTube channel, I can be like, bah, there you go. And uh, that could be quite useful. So that's something I'm going to have to work on before salute. And if anything, this has made me even more excited for Salute uh, in a few weeks. Uh, so yeah, just can't wait for that. As always, thanks for watching this and I'll see you next time. Bye.